Another high-ranking uh, high House Republican is turning his back on Congresswoman Liz, Liz Cheney. In a statement first reported by Punchbowl News, House Minority Whip Steve Scalise endorsed New York Republican Elise Stefanik to take over Cheney's leadership role, saying she is the best fit to help Republicans retake the majority. The implication being that a leader who does not support Donald Trump's conspiracies about a stolen election cannot unite the GOP. Donald Trump himself endorsed Stefanik today with a statement on his website since he remains, again, locked out of major social media platforms, he says, um, or in response to the move to try and oust her, Liz Cheney says to a spokesperson, Liz will have more to say in the coming days. This moment is about much more than a House leadership fight. Joining me now is Punchbowl News founder Jake Sherman and former RNC chairman and MSNBC political analyst Michael Steele. Jake, really good to see you in front of a camera and outside of that little office that you've been huddled in for the past I feel, year. I feel free, um, Katie. I'm a free man here while I'm on TV. It's great. <laughs> you, you, you look free. Um, give us the, the lay of the land for what's going on. Yeah, Liz Cheney, um, basically the entire Republican leadership has turned against Liz Cheney. Kevin McCarthy, Steve Scalise are both working privately to get Cheney out of the leadership and to boost Elise Stefanik, New York Republican close to Donald Trump and somebody who has been in the House for, this is her fourth term. I, I mean, Katie, it's difficult to encapsulate, difficult to adequately detail how uh, remarkable and stunning this is for a leadership team to completely collapse on one member of Congress. And uh, Ms. Cheney says this is more, or her spokesman said, this is more than a, a leadership race. Her, what she's trying to say is that she's going to continue to call out Donald Trump for lying about the election and the January 6th in, insurrection here in the Capitol. Uh, the, the reality is, and the reality that a lot of people are communicating to Cheney and, frankly, to other Republicans in the leadership, is they don't want to be talking about that. Even people who voted for impeachment, many people I've spoken to say, we get it, she's, she's made her point, but now we have to move on and talk about the other side. And Cheney's point is no, like Trump is dangerous and we need to be consistently and constantly reminding people of uh, the danger that Donald Trump poses and the fact that he can't be near the decision making process again. That's Cheney saying that, not me. So it seems inevitable, Katie, that next week uh, when the House returns from se into session, Virginia Fox, a Republican from North Carolina, is going to introduce a motion, plans to introduce a motion to get rid of Cheney. From all of my reporting, and I've been dealing with this for the last you know, 48 hours, pretty much every minute, it does not appear that there's any chance Cheney can hold on. And it seems almost certain that Stefanik will ascend to the leadership in her place. Michael, why don't I hear more from other Republicans who agree that Donald Trump is promoting a lie? I know there are other Republicans in Congress who agree. I've heard from Mitt Romney, but what about the other ones who, who voted um, to impeach him and the other ones who, who just frankly know that the election was not stolen um, and that the House seems to be embracing it in order to serve their own political purposes and not democracy. Well, because democracy doesn't matter. Trump matters more than democracy. Trump matters more than the party. Uh, they don't want to be uh, chained uh, the way Liz has been chained. Uh, and they don't want to be Romneyed the way Mitt was Romneyed over the weekend. Um, by booze at his own state uh, uh, party function. Um, they don't want that pressure. They would rather see the democracy collapse under the weight of Donald Trump than to stand and hold that democracy up. Um, and, and to make the point that Liz Cheney is correctly making that Donald Trump is a danger to this country, not just the party. We are past the danger to the party that he is a danger to this country. And then that is something that a lot of people um, agreed with last November. <laughs> uh, and, and so they want to persist in this narrative. So you're not going to see these, these brave souls come out and stand with Liz Cheney. You know, uh, Congresswoman St uh, Stefanik sees her opportunity. She's wormed her way into position uh, by, you know, the payoff for chumming up for Trump. Uh, will be of uh, the number three spot in the House. Uh, God bless her. Good luck Jake, with that. <laughs> Jake, do Republicans want to see Donald Trump back on social media? I mean, I know they spent uh, four years, five years, pretending like they never saw a tweet or a post from him. And there was all this consternation about how they would rather he not tweet 
Do they do they want to see him reinstated? Yeah, it's, a, it's kind of a complicated question. I assume many of them do. I think that, you know, the Repu a key part of the Republican platform right now, Katie, is that social media companies, big tech, as they call them, have, have too much has too much power. And um, I, I think they are not uh, upset that they don't have to answer for the president anymore because all he does is send out these missives on email and he's going to have this new, almost a Tumblr page, it seems like, uh, where he'll issue his statements in the future. Um, I, you know, listen, I think that many, if you, if you cast a quiet or a secret ballot put people on truth serum i think what you'd hear republicans say is they would like trump to help them win back the majority and they would like him to not primary members of congress members of the senate they'd like to see him raise money for house and senate republicans and kind of live in his own world i don't think that's anywhere tethered to reality though yeah. <laughs> All right, Michael, just to you really quickly, when you say truth serum, I know a lot of people feel like politics is, you know, you speak one way, you believe another another way, um, and that it goes for everybody. But but this is on a whole different scale, what's going on with the Republicans and what they're choosing per to perpetuate here. Absolutely. I mean, this idea that they just think they're going to be able to manage Trump. Ask John Boehner and Paul Ryan how that worked out for them. This, this is not a guy you manage. This is a guy you extricate from your location. <laughs> you put him off site. You don't want him in your orbit. I mean, it's like the rogue planet that shoots through the, through the galaxy and bumps into other planets and disrupts things. And, and, you know, these folks are sitting there thinking that all we need Donald Trump to do is raise us money, not primary us, and give us a clean bill of health with, you know, with his voters, um, and we're good to go. Well, there are consequences, dire consequences, real consequences that come with that. And you're seeing this play being played out as they're about to eject from leadership one of the prominent conservative leaders uh, in the Republican Party uh, for Donald Trump's sycophant. That's the party. It's like a cue ball that... It's like a cue ball that does not respect the laws of physics. Michael Steele, exactly. thank you very much. Exactly. Dick Sherman, Dick Sherman, thank you. I, I just came up with that. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> gentlemen, appreciate it. Coming up.